Merry Christmas, kind friends and neighbors. This is Marvin Miller, your storyteller, about to bring you one of the sweetest stories ever told, The Gift of the Little Shepherd, by my good friend, Walter Hank Richards. Be of good cheer, men of all nations. On this night in Bethlehem, the Christ was born. It all happened in the dim, distant past on the eve of the very first Christmas. The night was dark as dark could be. There was no moon and no light save that given off by the twinkling stars and the campfires of the shepherds tending their flocks in the hills about Bethlehem. Around one of the campfires sat a very young shepherd named Joel and his uncle, a very old shepherd. Suddenly, Joel heard a lamb crying out for its mother. He stood up and cupped his hand behind his ear. When the lamb bleated again, he woke his uncle. Hark, good uncle. I hear a lost sheep crying for its mother. Uncle Matthew stirred and opened his eyes. I is the lamb of the old ewe that was slain by the wild beasts at eventide. Uncle Matthew hesitated. And then observing how interested his nephew was, he smiled knowingly. Go forth, little shepherd, and rescue that lamb. And thou mayst keep it for thy very own. A lamb of mine own, good uncle? The old shepherd nodded. I... It is well thou shouldst know the joy of possession in thy youth. The little shepherd was off like the wings of the wind, and in no time at all he reappeared in the circle of firelight, clutching a tiny lamb close to his breast. Old Matthew nodded his approval. The little shepherd was filled with pride, for this was indeed the first thing of importance that he had ever owned. Now I am grown to man's estate. I am no longer a child. I am a man with property. Jehovah is good, dear uncle. And thou also. During the hours that followed, the little shepherd fed and watered the little lamb. Then he bathed the little lamb. Then he bathed it and dried it and combed its white fleece. By the time he was done, Joel had grown oh so weary. And his eyes were so heavy, he dozed off to sleep by the fire, holding the baby lamb in his arms. The old shepherd smiled in his beard. And as the midnight hour approached, he raised his eyes toward the skies and breathed a prayer. Blessed Jehovah, thy faithful child looks up unto thee, offering thanks for the midnight and the silent stars. The sky is thy temple, O Jehovah, and here neath thy stars I am close to thee. Suddenly the old shepherd became conscious of wondrous music in the night. A light was growing brighter in the sky overhead. Now it was like daylight, then like the sun, then like a thousand suns. Other shepherds tending their flocks on the hillside began calling out to each other. Is this a fire or has a star fallen? Then as the light grew brighter than anything they had ever seen, someone cried out, It is the end of the world! <laughs> Woe unto Israel! And the lamenting of the frightened men awoke the little shepherd. And when he saw the great light, he too was afraid. And he clutched his little lamb closer and cried out, Uncle! Uncle, where art thou? The old shepherd placed his arm about the little shepherd. Have no fear, little shepherd. The hand of our Lord Jehovah is in this. The little shepherd knelt beside his uncle. And raising his face toward the blinding light, he began to pray. Be merciful, O Jehovah. Spare my uncle and his flock. And, and if thou takest me... Take also my little lamb to join thy heavenly flock. Suddenly before their upturned eyes there appeared in the heavens an angel of the Lord hovering in the sky with his great white wings outspread. The angel spoke in a loud voice. Fear not, good shepherd. I bring ye tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ 
the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. The light faded from the heavens and the angel was gone. But there remained in the sky one bright blue star, the brightest, bluest star they had ever seen. Old Matthew gathered the frightened shepherds about him. Heard thou the angel of the Lord? Yes, what he said. The Messiah is born in the city of David, which is our Bethlehem. We must hasten to proclaim him, the King of Kings. The shepherds left their flocks and hastened down from the hills, for they knew there were mangers in an old cave behind the Khan of Bethlehem. The little shepherd followed along half running, half walking, trying to keep up with the big shepherds, his crooked staff in one hand and his beloved lamb in his arms. When they came at last to the Khan of Bethlehem, they found the gate barred and bolted. Open up thy gates and hear the tidings we bring. The keeper of the gate, with sleep heavy upon his voice, refused them. Be on thy way. This place has been filled to overflowing these many hours with pilgrims journeying to Jerusalem for the Passover. Old Matthew refused to take no for an answer. We seek no shelter. We are shepherds from the hills. Come to tell of the marvels which we have seen and heard this night. I have seen the marvels, but I have heard nothing. Please let us enter, good keeper of the gate. How am I to know you are not thieves? Come to rob the patrons of my establishment. Look now, good keeper. We send forth a little shepherd bearing the crooked staff, emblem of our calling. He will prove we are shepherds. I, shepherds from the hills of Bethlehem. They're in tidings of great joy. What are these tidings? On this night, the Messiah was born in a manger here in Bethlehem. The Messiah born in a manger? Aye, even as the prophet foretold. The keeper held his dim lantern down from the gate and found himself looking into the eager eyes of the little shepherd. I cannot believe thee. Yet I cannot turn thee away. Follow me, good shepherd. And I shall lead thee to the mangers in the old cave. And I shall lead thee to the mangers in the old cave. Where on this night Joseph and Mary of Nazareth are sheltered. As the good shepherds followed the keeper to the cave, the great blue star lighted their way. The little shepherd with his lamb still clutched to his heart entered the cavern. And though it was lighted only by the dim lantern of the gatekeeper, he was astounded to find the manger brightened by an aura of soft golden light. The old shepherd greeted an elderly man, gray of beard, and stated the mission of the shepherds. Joseph bowed and led them to the manger. Ah, good Mary, these shepherds have come down from the hills to see the babe. The shepherds crowded around the creche. The Messiah, born in Bethlehem, the city of David, even as the prophet had foretold centuries before. The little shepherd stood on tiptoe, trying to see over the broad shoulders of the big shepherds. Then as the good shepherds knelt to do homage to the Christ child, Joel found himself gazing into the tender eyes of the most beautiful young woman he had ever seen. She lay there in the manger in raiment of purest white, with one slim arm thrown about a tiny babe in swaddling clothes. Even as the angel said... The little shepherd knelt down beside the other shepherds, his heart pounding with rapture. Oh, blessed, blessed are we. This was the moment which all generations of the Israelites had waited for. And the humble shepherds of the hills, good men and honest, were blessed above all men and granted privilege of being first to gaze upon the Savior, which was Christ the Lord. Joel's little lamb broke the silence within the cavern, and the little shepherd tugged at the robe of his uncle. Old Matthew looked down into the boy's radiant face and heard him whisper, Good uncle, would, would it be proper for me to, to give unto the Christ child some token of my love? The old shepherd put a finger to his lips and signaled for silence. Thou hast no offering worthy of the king of kings. My little lamb, I... Old Uncle Matthew stroked his beard, and the pearls stood deep upon his brow. Then he nodded. Very well, little shepherd. Make thy offering to the Messiah. The boy shepherd rose to his feet and extended his little lamb toward the Christ child. But at that moment, the keeper of the gate re-entered the cavern in great haste. Make way, humble shepherds! Make way for king! 
A moment later, while the shepherds watched, three kings of Orient, dressed in robes of purple and gold, entered the cave and strode majestically to the manger. They knelt and offered precious gifts of rare and treasured frankincense and myrrh and gold. The little shepherd stood there with tears of embarrassment rolling down his cheeks. His little lamb was like a heavy stone in his arms. He tried so hard not to cry. But in spite of himself, one anguished sob escaped his lips. It was then that Mary spoke for the first time. She looked over the crowned heads of the kneeling kings and smiled her tender smile and said, Why dost thou weep, little shepherd? Joel stood there with tears rolling down his cheeks. This is a moment of great joy. <laughs> I too had, had a gift for the Christ child. A gift, little shepherd, from you? Tis nothing of value, good Mary. Nothing worthy of the master. Oh, only this little lamb. Tis all I have. His only possession. The smile on Mary's sweet face brightened, and the kings nodded their approval. Come forth, little shepherd, and dry thy tears. The holy mother held out her hand, and the little shepherd came forward, and kneeling, he placed his beloved lamb in the manger beside Jesus. The Christ child awoke then, and the light about him grew brighter. My lamb for thee, Lord Jesus, to be thine own. The infant Jesus seemed to look first at the lamb nestling in the manger beside him, and then into the adoring face of the little shepherd. The light about Jesus brightened into a golden halo as a smile crossed his baby lips. The gift of thine only possession has pleased the baby. Aye, far more precious than our gifts of frankincense, myrrh, and gold are the gifts of sacrifice. Thy gift pleases him more than all the rest. He smiles upon you, his first blessing. The Holy Mother placed her hand upon the curly head of the shepherd boy. By the gift of sacrifice, thou hast revealed the heart of the earnest giver. May thou dwell upon this earth as the patron saint of true giving until the very end of time. The little shepherd kissed the hem of Mary's gown. But Mary, I know now that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And that little shepherd boy who was present on the first Christmas grew into manhood and has lived on down the ages as the spirit of Christmas giving. the best of the holiday season to you all. This radio greeting card, The Gift of the Little Shepherd, was written by Walter Hank Richards, and I was assisted in its presentation by Colleen Collins, with Ivan Dittmars at the Grand Organ. This is the Merry Christmas Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.